So I've got all the circuit boards out of this ARP Omni and uh, I'm going to begin recapping it. While I'm recapping it, I'm also going to replace the sliders uh, since um, invariably the sliders on an old synthesizer are going to be dirty and scratchy at best. Um, and then also I noticed some of them, they're, they're pretty stiff. Um, so rather than try to, to clean the old ones, and, and they may work fine again, but they'll, they'll feel old and, and cheap, uh, I'm going to replace them with an LED slider kit that I sell on my website. Um, the sliders are much higher quality, and, uh, and they look cooler too. Um, but I'm going to start with uh, recapping the, uh, the uh, upper voicing board here, and the lower voicing board and uh, the phaser board. While the boards are out for recapping, it provides an excellent opportunity to do a visual inspection of them. In, in particular, I go, over the, well, I go over the whole board to look for any obvious problems, but I also take a look at any uh, prior work uh, that was done to the board and uh, make sure that it was done correctly. Oftentimes, uh, um, poor prior work can actually lead, lead to problems. It's an indication that there might be a problem. So on the phaser, um, this probably isn't a problem, but I'm still going to correct it. Um, someone kind of uh, cut the diode and then soldered it back. So we're going to replace that with a new one while we do the recapping. Um, on the upper voicing board, uh, I noticed that there had been a uh, the tantalum capacitor here had been replaced with an electrolytic. And then I was looking at that area and I noticed that uh, a couple of the resistors were replaced as well. Sometimes these get a little toasty. But uh, I just compared the, uh, the values on those resistors to the schematic to make sure that everything was correct. And, uh, and this one here um, it was replaced with a 100 ohm resistor and it should be a 10. So we're going to change that back. And while I was looking in that area further, I noticed this uh, uh, 4007 chip has, uh, has badly cracked solder joints uh, here. So we're going to replace that chip as well when we do the recapping. So again, doing the visual inspection, uh, looking over the entire board, reviewing the prior work, can save a lot of effort um, later once you put all the boards back and need to do troubleshooting. Um, so the uh, lower voicing board, it, it looked okay. Um, with the uh, with a couple of uh, capacitors that had been replaced, was pretty and uh, and some ICs had been replaced and socketed, uh, but that that work looked pretty good. Um, so there's, there were no obvious issues to me on the lower voicing board. So now we're going to remove all these capacitors, all these blue capacitors, this uh, electrolytic capacitor. We're even going to replace the capacitors that, uh, the electrolytic capacitors that, um, that, are, that are not original. Uh, we don't know how long they've been there. And the ones that I use in my kit are really high quality, so we're going to prefer those to be there uh, than, than these. So I'm going to depopulate these boards, and um, then we'll put the capacitors in. For desoldering, I use this Hakko uh, FR300. It's a uh, desoldering tool. It has a, uh, a hollow point nozzle that you can set over the leads of the component, and it has a vacuum pump. <laughs> press the button and it sucks the solder into the little chamber. Uh, it has adjustable heat and for ARP boards uh, I would always use the, uh, the lowest heat setting and even then you need to be really careful because the, uh, it's very easy to damage uh, uh, pads and, and, and traces on the ARP boards. So the diode uh, that, that had the uh, crude repair was soldered on the component side of the board. Uh, it wasn't even connected. Um, there's this uh, there's a blob of solder and it was touching the lead that went through the board but it wasn't actually soldered. So it's a good thing we noticed that and, uh, and are correcting it. Also they had uh, managed to, to damage 
uh, the uh, the uh, traces under the board. I guess that's why they gave up. They started to lift those pads and they gave up and uh, and just did it on the component side of the board. So we're going to correct that and have the the leads go to the correct spot on the the uh, bottom of the board. So I've depopulated the upper voicing board, the lower voicing board, and the phaser. I've removed uh, 87 or so uh, tantalum capacitors. Some of them had been replaced with electrolytics, and then one uh, one electrolytic capacitor on the uh, the lower voicing board. I also took out the uh, resistor, which was the wrong value, and I removed the IC there that had cracked solder joints. Um, lower voicing board, I removed all those capacitors down there. Uh, there were some uh, damaged pads. Um, if you recall, there was uh, some orange capacitors there that someone had replaced at some point. And uh, it's very easy to damage these boards when, when desoldering uh, or, or soldering. Um, and one thing that you can do, uh, we should do, and which I did, is uh, clean the boards uh, after you desolder before you resolder. Um, that'll make a better connection, make it easier to solder. You need to use less heat. Uh, and so I used uh, denatured alcohol. You can use uh, isopropyl alcohol, acetone if you're feeling like killing some brain cells. Um, and so I cleaned all the, the areas where those components came out. And you can see it's, it's pretty nasty. Um, it's just dirt on the board and then flux residue from some of the prior repairs. On the phaser I took out the capacitors and then I also removed this diode which uh, w wasn't even really connected. Um, um, and we're going to put all these parts back in um, using my uh, capacitor kit. It has a nice little checklist of, of what goes on what board. Um, so we will put those in and then I'll uh, show you the, the finished product. One more tip for soldering the art boards. They are double sided but they're not plated through hole. And uh, as you can see there's, there's, uh, there's traces on the top of the board. So you need to get a good connection for your, your component on both sides of the board. And one way that you can do that besides cleaning the board is a uh, liberal application of flux. So I use, uh, people ask me about this um, via email all the time. Uh, I use a, a Kester 951 uh, no clean flux. You don't have to buy a ton of it. A little bit goes a long way. Uh, I think this costs like five bucks or so on eBay. And uh, I apply it to both sides of the board just using a Q-tip and just liberally rub it over the, uh, the pads that you're going to be soldering to. And uh, that will really, really help get a, a good joint on both sides of the board. Um, I'll flip this board over and, and apply some on the back too. But it's very important to, to put to flux this side of the board so you get a good connection on the component side where your soldering iron isn't going to touch. So I've completed the recapping of these three boards, the upper and lower voicing board and the phaser. By far, this is the most tedious part of the recapping. There's 108 polarized capacitors in this uh, capacitor kit, uh, and 87 of them are on these three boards alone. You can see there's a, there's a number on this board. Uh, there's some low-profile ones here that are going to be under the phaser, and there's a bunch over here. In the phaser, there's, there's several of them as well. So it definitely takes a while. Um, and a, a great deal of care not to damage these boards when you're doing it. Um, there's again the waste product. Uh, while I was doing that I repaired other issues that I saw. Um, I changed the, the value of this resistor to the correct one. I replaced this IC which had cracked solder joints um, rather than just uh, Resoldering the old IC. Um, if I'm going to work on it, I'm going to replace it with something with a new one that I know is going to work. Um, on the the lower on the phaser, I replaced this uh, protection diode um, that they have, um, which was uh, at one point cut, and then someone tried to solder it, but it wasn't actually connected. So. Um, uh, the protection diode is there f for a reason to protect um, 
in, in case you plug connector in wrong um, and uh, it's it's good to have that that actually working so the next thing we're going to turn our attention to is the power supply um, we're going to repair the power supply and also uh, replace the power cord which someone had cut the grounding plug out of so that will do in the next part